I'm going to be upright and honest with you right now. I have never heard of this particular story that I'm bringing to you right now until I saw it on Tariq Nasheed's Twitter page. And when I saw it involved a white woman and a Mexican immigrant, I was like, okay. Now I see what's going to end up happening. So I didn't know anything about this story at all. But in this image, you have the picture of a woman by the name of Kate Steinle. And I'm trying to look through this article right now to find the name of the man. Okay, his name is Jose Inez Garcia Zarate. But um, basically, they he murdered this woman. Okay. He... uh. I'm trying to find through this article because I don't really want to read every single thing because I'm trying to get to a specific point here. Um, okay, apparently it says that he murdered this woman. I've seen something about a gun, so I'm assuming that he shot her to death. And he went to trial, and they found him not guilty. They said that on Thursday, the jury decided to not, uh, they said they decided to acquit Jose Zarate of not only murder, but also lesser charges of involuntary manslaughter and assault with a deadly weapon. Instead, he was convicted of unlawful possession of a firearm, which carries a sentence of up to three years. So basically, he didn't get the murder charge, so he won't be going to jail for life. He pretty much got hit with a misdemeanor. So this man right here has some damn good lawyers. Let me put it this way. This guy's about to be the Mexican community they're, he's about to be their O.J. Simpson. Only difference is O.J. never went to jail. This guy's going to jail for three years, but not for the heavy murder charge that they tried to convict him of. Now, the driving point that I wanted to make with this video is actually coming from the same article I just read. I mean, just pulled that excerpt from. And that is, these white nationalists are pissed. You hear me? They are outraged that this man, this immigrant, killed this white woman and he's not going to jail for the rest of his life or at the very um, least being deported <coughs> back to Mexico. Now we know that 45 ran his campaign off of the slogan, make America great again, building a wall, deporting the immigrants, this, that, and the third. Well, it looks like this guy managed to slip through the cracks in more than one way. He slipped through that crack to get over here and he's slipping through the crack of not being have to not having to be sent back over there he's going to be in a prison here in the states serving just three years for not even the major charge now the caucus thing is mad they are mad mad like they probably turned a few colors i bet they're going to go riot tear up some neighborhoods cause chaos and confusion and get into it with the cops and you want to know what's so interesting about this those are the same exact talking points they use when it comes to us ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun literally this guy had a gun like they had all the evidence they needed to prove that this guy killed this woman but they were able to throw all of that out and get him on having unlawful possession of a weapon. Meaning, if he had that gun lawfully, he probably wouldn't have even got hit with that. He probably would have got even hit with a lower charge than uh, what he got serving three years now. All I have to say now to the Mexican community is because now that this has happened, you are going to now be a primary target for them. Black people don't get too comfortable because we will always be a target of them. We have always been their number one target. The Mexican community now, because of this, you are going to probably be uh, target number two. You have just moved up with them. Let me go ahead and read a little bit of this. It says, Tall and short white candles were lined up neatly around and on a wooden bench at Pier 14 in one of San Francisco's tourist spots where two and a half years ago, a young woman was shot and killed while on a stroll with her father. Perched on top, a picture of a smiling Kate Steinle is taped on a white poster and surrounded with handwritten messages. You're not here because somebody who wasn't supposed to be was. Right below Steinle's picture, build the wall. 
See, they've already started. Y'all are gonna, I'm telling you, the Mexican community, y'all better watch out. Y'all are gonna become even bigger targets. Some of them already didn't like you. Unless you are cutting their grass, doing any kind of manual labor around their home. But now they're gonna be looking at you with a major side eye because of this. But to the caucus and community, especially the ones that's talking about doing what they may plan on doing and whatnot, this is what you get. Because how many tragedies have black people fell to or the black community suffered as a whole? And y'all got on the social media or anywhere else you could and threw that shit back in our face. I'll never forget when Trayvon Martin was killed and you had white people out there dressing as him for Halloween, throwing on blackface, having on a hoodie, some sweat, uh, some Skittles and iced tea and having bullet holes and blood coming out of the shirt. They even had something called Trayvoning, where they help people have people lay down on the ground in the grass at night and have someone take a picture of them while they're pretending to be shot and killed. Or how they mocked Mike Brown or Tamir Rice and John Crawford. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Y'all, this, this is probably going to be the most outrage they have been since OJ got acquitted back in 1995. Now, I take that back. Let me go a little bit, um, come forward with Muhammad Noor over the summer. When he, uh, uh, with the Kuznick chick. Remember him? I wonder what ever happened to him. They haven't really talked about him since then. Maybe nothing did happen to him. I'm not sure. It's been, it's been real quiet. A lot of stuff has happened since then, as you can already tell. They haven't been that outraged since then. But I think this might eclipse that because this woman was American born, unlike Kuznick, who was from Australia and was only in the States for what, five years, for three or five years. So this one for them stings a little bit more because they took away their all American girl. And I put that in quotations. But like they always say to us, the A, the, what's it set in the stone? That's what, that's what's it. That's not what they say, but. Case closed. They said the same thing with George Zimmerman, with Darren Wilson. Oh, respect the process or respect the court, respect the law, something like that. Darren Wilson, George Zimmerman, the cop who killed Sandra, the people who killed Sandra Bland, uh, the one who killed Rakia Boyd. So, oh, there was only two that received justice. That was Jordan Davis and Relisha McBride. Both of their killers in, are in jail serving very long sentences now. One of them has life. They are the only two. And ironically, both of them happened, uh, no, one happened in 2012, because one happened in, at the end of 2012, and then one happened in 2014. That was the last time that I can think of where there was actually rightful justice served for the killings of two black people. And both of them were teenagers. They Both of them were under the age of 18. One was shot at a gas station. One was shot in the head. What was that Rakia Boyd? I can't remember. See, it's so many. It's hard to keep up. But yeah, it is what it is. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Have your notifications turned on.